Elaine Hall Corbin, your host. But thank you for joining us this afternoon on Artists of Color. I appreciate your company and hope you will appreciate ours. You know, February, they say, is Black History Month. And they always talk about black history and our culture and what we do as a people. Well, today, I have t two amazing guests who are doing amazing things. And I like amazing people. So I am going to introduce Justin Springer from Boston Arts and Music Soul Festival, which we will get into shortly. Sure. And the amazing Ashley Gordon from Castle of Our Skins, which is a musical and an art and cultural program that I happened to come across back in December during the Christmas season. And I have to say, I just fell in love with the music. I was just excited. So these are my guests today. So Ashley, Justin, thank you for joining us today. I really, appre I really appreciate this. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I seriously yeah. do. I'm, first of all, I'd like both of you guys to tell, uh, tell my audience a little bit about you sure. as two people. Justin, I want to start with you. Sure. Uh, my name is Justin Springer. Uh, I have a company called Outside the Box Agency uh, where we focus in emerging brands, adding value to their campaigns. Um, we work with a lot of various um, clients uh, from Arts Emerson uh, to Zodiac Fly Apparel to the Minority Business Expo. Uh, but I wear a lot of different hats. Um, I have a couple different programs as well. Uh, just like to stay active and you know, just bring service to my community through the arts. Are you a Boston resident? I live in West Medford right now, um, but I'm always in Boston. Yeah. Were you, so I'm going to ask you, were you yeah. raised here? I was raised in a couple different areas, which, okay. you know, I'm, I'm grateful for. Um, I, was, I was raised in Mattapan, okay. then, then moved to West Medford, um, where I spent most of my childhood. Okay. I was a product of divorce, so um, my father lives in Tennessee, and my mother lives in and stayed in Medford, and so I would always go back and forth. So I always feel like I have the best of both worlds. Got a laid-back mentality with a city hustle. Oh, I can tell that. Yeah, so my laid-back <laughs> self is, you'll see, see that more. I can see it. But I try to bring that self in hospitality, too. You know, oh, well, there you go. As well, so. I like that. Yeah, so, but I mean, Boston's my home. You know, wherever I go, you know, Boston, I represent Boston. Um, mm. I think I've you know, represented Boston the best I can, you know, in the past, you know, past 15 years working okay. in, in the industry. So and I've lived in other markets, you know, in my adult life as well. But um, my goal is to, is to bring a lot of value to the city. Um, and me and Ash were just talking earlier. Uh, there's a true renaissance going on. So I want to be a part of it. And I want to be, you know, part of the innovation that takes a, uh, takes us to another another level as a community. Very good. Oh, I'm glad about that. I like renaissances and yeah. all those things that go with it, you know, and moving forward and bringing our culture, you know, and our history and teaching. You know, I love that. Ash, tell me, tell us about you. Sure, yeah. My name is Ash Gordon. I am the artistic director and co-founder and violist of Castle of Our Skins which is now in its second year uh, here in Boston. It's a concert and educational series that fundamentally wants to spark uh, curiosity in black culture. And we do that through music, we do that through concert programming at the Roxbury um, YMCA, which we're in residence this year, and at Roxbury Community College, and also the Museum of African American History. And we do educational workshops, and to date have, have reached over a thousand youths with our Who's workshops. that you? That, that is, is part that of you? my life. Who are you? <laughs> That's part of my life as artistic director of this organization, which we'll definitely talk about yes, later. Yes, we're going to talk about a lot of that. Um, but uh, me, I guess where I'm from, I'm originally from Rochester, New York, and studied, I'm a violist, so my, mm -hmm. my life has been wrapped up in, in music. music. Uh, started with piano, which I hated to practice, <laughs> and then switched to That's violin good. and uh, to viola. And my viola has taken me, um, certainly in this country, through studying and has brought me to Boston for school. I did my master's at New England Conservatory. 
And then it's sort of taken me all over the world. And I went to Germany to do more study in music as a violist and doing specifically contemporary music, so very kind of harsh, crazy, not, not melodious sounds, but I kind of like that. Uh, and it's taking me to Hong Kong and throughout Europe and uh, North America. So. You are very diverse yeah. young lady. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I mean, you and I never got a chance to talk, really. Right. But right. I had no idea. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Mm. That is fantastic. Yeah. So uh, do you live in the community as we speak more? So right now I live in Jamaica Plain. Oh, to me, that's the community. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Right I mean, I definitely, uh, when I was in Germany, which was for a year and a half for, for school, I had um, sort of a, a point in my life where I was thinking, okay, I could stay here in Germany as a vegetarian and eat a lot of cheese, which they do in, <laughs> which in, they Germany. Do in Germany. There's a lot of meat and, and potatoes. Um, I didn't necessarily know German, but I could have invested in trying to learn German, or I could come back to the States. And for me, Boston was definitely a home home place, so um, Great. decided I would skip the, the German lesson. Skip the German lessons, just come <laughs> and, on back And to come Boston. back to Boston and, and make it a home base. And as, as Justin was saying, it's really exciting now mm -hmm. to be here when there is this thriving um, need, and more than just a need, but actual action in the, in the arts communities to, to have this renaissance and just take, it, it really take the is. city by storm. It really is. Justin. Yes. You are one of the co-founders, uh, or are you one of like the, let's just put it this way, you're going to talk to me and my audience about Boston Arts and Music Soul Festival. Yes, which is... I want to, which, we want to yes. know what that is. So let me first say that I'm more behind the curtain type of guy. Uh, Catherine Morris, who is our founder of BAMS uh, could not be here today so I filled in but I, I, I'm definitely a big part of what we're trying to do uh, so Catherine Morris uh, a few years ago who's been a big supporter of, with my business um, you know just shared her, her dream about having uh, being able to produce a soul festival in Boston okay. you know and for me that piqued my interest because uh, just going through the industry and, and also trying to build, you know, a platform in Boston, uh, it's tough. You know, you have yeah, a lot of, uh, you know, back in the day, you didn't have the Live Nations that were kind of dictating what, co what soul events come into our market. Um, mm -hmm. And then when you find, and then when they, when you have soul acts that do come in our market now, you usually don't hear about it to the next day. That's true. Um, so I knew there was, um, I knew there was, I, when she pitched it to me, I, I, I knew I wanted to be a part of it in, 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 any, in some capacity. capacity. So in between that time, in the last few years, we have, uh, uh, as a team, we built a collective. And we have a collective of some amazing uh, Bostonians. Actually, mm -hmm. you know, I can't say all of them are from Boston, but they're all here. And they're there all passionate in music. Um, you know, we have a couple folks from Berkeley. We have... Um, some folks from Boston College. Um, so oh. we come together to really um, to bring this festival here, and we plan to bring it here in 2018. So oh, I can't um, wait. Yeah, oh, and, I and, and, and wait for that. And so to be honest with you, like it's it's not like a, a Catherine Morris thing or or us. It's it's this is for the community. This is for the city. Um, there's a you know there's a need to not only bring great talent to the city and international talent, not just top 40, but real true soul music uh, and it's not just soul music either i'm sorry it's, you. you know it's dance there's art, art. um Welcome so morning. we want we want to bring that here in 2018 but also give a platform for our local homegrown Thanks. talent yes. uh so imagine you know having um shaka khan on the on the main stage and then having someone like april stanford you know open up for her or maybe be on the same stage you know Really, we have we have the talent like a Philadelphia, Atlanta, you know, LA. It's we just have not, just as much talent yeah, through do. not just through music but through artistic. Artistic. You know, we we have a, a, a growing pop. I don't want to say growing population. It's always been here, but we have a growing um, like energy in the city right now that 
is really arts driven. And um, so I think it's the perfect time, you know, to bring something really positive in this, you know, in this community. But, you know, one thing, it's one thing to build a festival in 2018. It's, it's another thing, how do we build, build, up, it. build it up in between? So exactly. Which leads So you've got to 16 and 17 to put this together yeah. and bring it. I mean, now you're talking about a festival mm -hmm. and you're talking about the city of Boston. Do, are you planning, uh, is the plan to have this festival in different venues around um, the city? At the moment, we have, a, uh, I don't want to announce it today, but we do have um, a location in mind. Okay, um, you and do. We have, um, and the location is happy to have us there. Great. Um, it's kind of got like a farm feel to it. Um, but what we want to do is... I want to go to a farm to see this festival. <laughs> <laughs> Think like Woodstock, but, you know, black folk. Is know. it within the city? Well, I don't want to... Is I, it within the city? Can I get there on the bus? <laughs> you can get there. <laughs> okay. uh, but I mean, in between, I mean, it's really, you know, I'm at, I'm, go back in time a little bit, because I know mm -hmm. my father used to tell me about the days when Earth went in fire. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. when, and he would sneak under the fence and, you know... <laughs> Those are the days where you know black promoters had an opportunity, opportunity to 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 have some you know sustainability and, and you know event planning exactly um, and so we want to kind of really bring it back to that essence you know okay. but not, not, and then so in between now and 2018 we're building a, a programs of, of different events okay um, a lot of it's around education of our history yes um, so it's not just we're not just going to throw concerts at you but we're going to develop content on really the and I think a lot of times people forget that Boston was um, the platform before people went to Broadway. You had to go through Boston first to get, thank you. To get to Broadway. Yes, you too. did. And we had a, a vibrant jazz scene. Oh, you absolutely. Know, you know, in the South End. So, I mean, I think it's one thing we want to create new legacy, but we also have to preserve our, 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 our past, past legacies, legacies as well. So, uh, you know, we're not gonna, we're not just uh, gonna be concert promoters. We we really just want to revive, be part of. Not, we're not gonna revive anything, but we want to be part of, you know, bringing the legacy back. Exactly, you know, and, and so, education, which is number one. So we're also gonna do a lot of programming through schools as well, oh, which we all plan right. to do as well. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Now for the great thing I'm going to ask. Sure. Tell us a little bit about. The concert that's coming up on the 19th. Yeah, so I, I, I was waiting for that quote. I didn't want to throw yeah, it out yeah, there. Well, here I am, and I've asked. <laughs> <laughs> so when you think about Prelude, um, and this is, again, the vision of Catherine Morris. When you, when you think about Prelude, it's really getting you excited for what's to come. Okay. Um, so we created uh, this concert series called The Prelude, which mm -hmm. will be uh, launching on the 19th. Yep. And really with The Prelude, it's going to be a traveling uh, concert. So oh, it is. each uh, we pick different months where we're going to go to different parts of the this. No, I don't want to just say Boston, but different parts of the Greater Boston area. Okay. And oh. really, and really, um, really work with venues that um, are not don't really cater or feel inviting to us at times. You know, so okay. not with this first event, but our first event will be next Friday at the Bowling Building, which right. is in Roxbury. But moving forward, we, some of the venues that we identified are definitely venues that um, particularly don't have concerts or, see, or, like or particularly may not have been invited to us in the past. Right. Um, and that's a whole other topic. But so we, we plan to, you know, bring in some great talent as well, but we also want to be able to promote homegrown talent. So when we start with next Friday, I'm sure you're familiar with Valerie Stevens. My best bud, mm. many years. So Valerie's gonna be the headliner, uh, and she's been a big supporter of BAMS. We recently, I know. We recently did an event with her, with um, the Fenway Alliance. Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, over at the Christian Science Center. Yeah. Uh, so we did an outdoor event this summer. I didn't know So that. we wanted to kick off the first Prelude event um, with, um, with Miss Stevens, and she's an amazing town I don't know. and personality oh you, yeah very big you. up there <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know think uh nina simone you know and that is that is the <laughs> is she doing nina simone she'll probably, I'll probably nina cry simone through that one and, 
And you know, and, and we have some young talent too. I mean, or not to say, you know. Yeah, I know. I was going to ask about yeah. the young talent. We, we yeah. Who, do you, who? Just give us a little bit of an, you know. So these these young guys that uh, we've been all following for a while. Their, their names is Smooth Impact. Never uh, heard of them. Four young kids from the Boston neighborhood. Uh, think New Edition, Acapella. So when you come to Prelude, you're probably going to encounter Smooth Impact first because they'll be serenading guests as they come in wow. doing acapella, kind of giving it like that old school on a, on a block, you yeah. know, so uh, they'll be, but they'll be performing their own music as well okay. um, before Valerie. Um, they'll, you know, we'll also be um, highlighting some um, local art curators as well. Okay. Um, oh, nice. Recently, Ash and Daniel Callahan uh, did an event together, and Daniel will be showing some of his work. Okay. Um, we also have Derek Trotman. Um, who is an amazing, I know Derek Trotman. amazing artist, Ayana yeah. Mack. I know Ayana uh, too. Who's, who's tremendous. And then we have Carla Vega, uh, who's another talented poet and visual artist I've as well. I've heard the name, but I don't think I've ever heard any of her, her work. So yeah. this will be a first with me for her. So yeah, so it's just going to really be an even of, uh, it's from 7 to 10. So it's, yeah. it's uh, kind of really an after work type of thing, not too late. Yep. Um, it's an all ages event. Um, I like we, that. <laughs> that what I like. Family. Well, I, think, I like that. Well, I think it's important that youth interact with adults, you know, outside of their parents, you know, and uh, I think it's, you know, it's, you know, a lot of kids don't get to experience, you no, know, they don't. you know, good live music, you know what I mean? Thank you. They you get know. to hear that other stuff. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's going to be a great event. And Why did you name the event Prelude? Prelude? Oh, so, yeah. so yes, yeah, so what I, um, prelude means what, you know, getting excited for what's to come, right? Okay. Prelude is the beginning of something, you know, exciting, right? right? So uh, we're not launching the festival to 2018, so right. Prelude concert is really to get people excited for what's to come, giving people a little taste of what you'll see on a multi-stage in 2018. All right. So, yeah. Wow. I can't believe that. Um, where can, well, I know we had the flyer up, but is sure. there any way that we can tell my audience yes. where they can get the information mm -hmm. um, about if there's tickets, but if there's tickets mm -hmm. and where to go to get them, sure. or whether you, they can buy them when they get there? Sure. I think the best way, uh, if you would like to attend, is to buy the tickets online, and you can find them on our website at www.bamsfest.com, -E and you can find out more information. All our social media networks are on there. You follow us. Uh, more than likely, we'll follow you back. Um, yeah, more than likely they will. Well, no, it's nothing <laughs> crazy or anything. You <laughs> I never, know, you never I know, know. that. <laughs> I know that. But, um, but that's where you can find us. And, you know, we have, a, we have an event in March as well, which is going to be really bringing, uh, it's called Courage of the Verb, which is really um, Where is this the, event going to be? The Cambridge Innovation Center. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't even know they had an Innovation Center. No, that's what I was telling you earlier. A lot of places that we haven't really been invited, invited to. Invited, but they're, so they're coming to fruition. Sometimes you just got to go in there and... Kick, yeah, sometimes kick the you door don't. In, you know. Yeah. So that event's going to be really special. I don't want to take all the time, but that's going to be an event that really bridges the gap. Not bridges the gap, but bridges the worlds of uh, poet, poets, yes. performing poets, and entrepreneurs. Um, and it's going to be workshops. So we're going to be featuring some of the best uh, slam poets oh, um, good. and some of the best pitching entrepreneurs because sometimes entrepreneurs. Uh, when they're pitching, may not know how to engage a crowd like a poet can. Um, so what it, is a pitching? So you know, uh, which has been really popular. I never heard of that. Well, you, you're familiar with uh, business pitches when you pitch yes. to investors. Yes, oh yeah, I have that, to learn that. So that's what I was referring to. Okay. And with poet, poets, they sometimes, uh, and artists in general, may not have um, a lot of the resources to build sustainability um, even with a business plan or a structure to further their, you know, their art careers. So we're trying to bring those worlds together where both of them can kind of, you know, help each other out. I so like there's a lot that. of cool stuff coming up. So that, but I like the fact that, that's great. I'm making my way out there too. But I, will, I <laughs> like the, the fact 
and the fact that you're doing this, you're beginning this mm -hmm. in the community. Uh, you have to. Yeah, yeah I, I, I love that. I think that is so important for our community as a whole, for something of this magnitude to start right here, you know, and to let people know across the city that it's, it's happening, that this is the, the first of many, and the fact that it also has to do with education. Yeah. You know, and that's important to our youth. I mean, you, you, I, I see youth every day, and it's, we all do. But we see what they're missing, the fact that they don't really know their culture, they don't really know their history, and to me, that's a, this, this is a way of helping them to get, to me, getting an understanding, because it's a language that they can understand. Yeah, it goes both ways, too. I think adults can also learn a lot from you. Absolutely. Well. Mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. So hopefully we can continue to plan more events that are kind of bringing all ages together. Have you gone into the schools yet, or is this a plan to do that? Um, it's been a plan. I mean, in some of my other projects, I'm, I work with schools. Mm -hmm. um, so I have access to, um, you know, the, we, we are going to probably start, we're going to focus on building our concert Right. Um, series first, okay. um, and then we're going to do some probably, probably by next year we'll probably be focusing on music curriculum in schools. But we also uh, work with Press Pass TV, who does a lot oh, of amazing work. Oh, Press Pass. Yeah, so um, we, we do have plans uh, to go into the schools probably by next year. Okay, very good. But you never know anything Yeah, because up, anything you know? can happen between yeah. now and next year. Yeah, you're you know? right. Well, I, when I say next year, I mean more of like the fall. The fall, the I understand, year. I hear you. <laughs> I hear Unless something goes on in the summer. There may be some yeah. things going on in the summer, too, so okay. we'll see. Well, that, that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I am, like, excited. I can't wait. I'll wait till you hear her. It, please! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I've heard a bit of her. <laughs> but wait till I really hear her. Yes, I know. <laughs> but, Ash, speak to us. Tell us about Castle... Of our skins. Yeah, so I, I gave a little spoiler. Yes, earlier. you did, but that was fine. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, Castle of Our Skins, it, it started a uh, concert and educational series here in Boston. It started uh, two years ago with, with very, very humble beginnings between myself and uh, my, my right hand, Anthony Green. Anthony Green. <laughs> and Anthony Green. I wish he was here today. He, I, wish he <laughs> you know, I wish you were here. He actually you know, lives in the Netherlands. Catherine, so. too. Uh, he and I, he's, we, where? he's in the Netherlands. <laughs> Again? He, that's where he lives. He oh has my a gosh. beautiful home that he's all set. He's, his home yeah, he's the happiest child in the world, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but um, he and I, were we connected through school. We connected through our studies at, at New England Conservatory. And we're kind of across the different continents and, and across the ocean. And we fi finally... I don't know how y'all do that. I, I don't know how we did it either. But we magically, stardust or something was in the air. And we found ourselves back in Boston. <laughs> and uh, have, have always had a mutual respect for each other's work. He's a composer, I'm a violist, and wanted to um, kind of selfishly explore our own culture. And between the two of us, could probably list about five, ten black composers with our conservatory training that we knew yeah, of. That you and all. Um, which was obviously a wake-up call for, for the two of us to say, listen, we need to, we need to do something um, to better educate ourselves about where we're coming from musically. And through that very humble and, and sort of selfish beginning, we decided, wow, there's, there's a wealth of information, a wealth of history, same mm -hmm. as what Justin is trying to explore with his, with his festival. Oh, bams, yeah. A wealth of history and culture, and through the voices that, that we are comfortable using, which is music, being able to explore that through our, um, through our music with our audiences, ranging from youths, ranging from seniors, mm -hmm. and having open dialogues about um, the importance of, of history and culture and just making sure that voices that have been underrepresented are, are represented on stage. Oh, wow. Well, we are going to talk a lot more. Because there is so much. I, as I said earlier, when I introduced these two, how I met Justin and how I met Ash, and it was like, wow. I, I couldn't, you know, I was just excited. I knew I was excited about you because you and I had talked a little bit, mm -hmm. but it had been a couple of years. Yeah. 
So what we're going to do is we are going to take a break and we're going to come back and we are really going to talk a lot more about Castle of Us Greens because people need to know. Yeah. You know? Good. I love this one. Good afternoon and welcome back to Artists of Color. And my guests have been Justin Springer from the Boston Arts and Music Soul Festival, who is no longer with us at the moment. He had to skip out. But we have the amazing Ash Gordon from Castle of Our Skins. And we were having, we had started a little bit of a discussion here to talk about that and to give, get a little information. Ash. My first question before we even go into that anymore is, where did you get the name? Yes, so our um, Castle of Our Skins focuses on black culture. Right. So looking, looking through what we could reference, I came across a gorgeous Nikki Giovanni poem, a uh, poem for Nina. And that poem mm -hmm. states uh, the first few lines we are um, are all imprisoned in the castle of our skins, and some of us have said, so be it, let me love that fact and exalt that fact and take full ownership and fill my castle with lilies and flowers and just beautiful, sweet things and, and really take ownership of the very thing that makes you who you are, which is your skin. And for me, for Castle of Our Skins, that was just perfect about really wow. trying to love and exalt who you are and the culture that you, come, you from. come from. Mm -hmm. Wow, that I like that. Yeah. I love that. I really do. You want to tell us how you got started? Yeah, so I was saying a little bit before the break, very small, uh, humble beginnings yep. in 2014, actually the summer of 2013 with Anthony Green. And we started with the idea of, okay, well, let's put on a concert. We're musicians, so let's, let's put on a concert. Oh. And our first concert was at Roxbury Community College in oh. 2014. And that <laughs> concert explored uh, the concept of love, but not so much in a, in a Valentine's Day, which is okay. around the corner, kind of a love, but a, a true ownership and sense of pride for your community, for mm -hmm. your um, feeling with your family, your, your connection with your family, your responsibility to your commu uh, community at large, and to take the ownership to make sure that your future and the future of those around you is, is what you want it to be. So we had music of, of uh, black composers, chamber music of black composers, as well as wow. readings from Barack Obama's inaugural uh, speech and really? speeches from Martin Luther King Jr., Nikki Giovanni poem that was read and other poets interwoven with the music so there was always this commentary this dialogue within the concert and certainly after so. the concert about how love really affects your sense of self and your sense of belonging to your community oh my yeah goodness. and from there we decided okay we need more more concerts obviously that's one aspect of what we do but another huge aspect of what we do is education and making sure that we have interactive educational workshops so that we really can have a dialogue with youths and a dialogue with whatever community 
um, is interested in, in engaging with us in this kind of dialogue. So Anthony created this um, one hour interactive workshop for me as a violist. And as a violist, I usually play. Yep. But for this workshop, I have to sing and I have to dance. <laughs> oh, I have that to recite must poetry. Have been so it's, it's me wearing all sorts of hats. But the piece that he created, which is absolutely uh, beautiful and I have so much fun every time I do it, talks about nine different figures in black history. And with kids, we learn about uh, culture. We learn about these, these figures, some of whom they already know, some of them are, are new for them right. through music and through uh, interaction. Now I'm going to ask you, because this wasn't even a plan. Yes. But now it's going to be a plan. Great. Can you give us just a little bit of that? In other words, can you, I know you can't do the music part, mm -hmm. but can you do the, the um, oratory part just a little bit? Um, so the, the poems that he, that he wrote, I don't know if off the top of my head, but I can, I can tell a little bit. So the first yeah. one is of Phyllis Wheatley, who is the first um, African-American poet, lived just on the other side of, of Beacon Hill. That's right. So um, let me see if I remember something saying saying that she was born in, in 1776, right, and that she came over on the Phyllis ship and was purchased from the Wheatley family. Mm -hmm. And her, her poems are uh, complicated, but they are still beautiful when you understand them, and um, something along those, those lines for Phyllis Wheatley. And then moving through, through time, through George Washington Carver, and okay. uh, Madam C.J. Walker, okay. who wow. sold her hair products and right. was the first made millionaire, self-made millionaire uh, around the country. Yeah. And so the kids at that point, they'll get to have the, um, have the opportunity of pretending that they're traveling around the country. So there's certain traveling music, they, so they have to listen to the music, wander around the room, and, and pretend that they're a first self-made millionaire oh and sort of gosh. invoke their... Madam C.J. Walker. That is fantastic. Presence. Yeah, it's, it's always fun and always different each time that I do it with What do you see audience. from the children when they do that? So I've, I've actually, I consider adults big, big kids. So I don't blame you. <laughs> I've done it for uh, as young as kindergarten and as old as uh, grandparents and great-grandparents. Really? And I have to say, it's, it's incredibly exciting for the great-grandparents to be able to interact and certainly get up and move. and experience on a different level and have different kinds of questions yes. uh, on that kind of level. The final uh, person that we feature is Barack Obama. So someone, usually an adult, gets to come up and they, I have this Barack Obama seal that they get to wear and they, they have a hot off the press uh, state of the union that they have to read, which is a description of Barack Obama. But they, it allows them to feel what, what would that feel like if I were a leader? If I were empowered, if I yes. if I take charge as someone else took charge, if I have a thought to create something like Madam C. J. Walker, who created hair products uh, and sold them all around the world, became the first self-made millionaire, what would that be like if I had that kind of energy and that kind of drive to do that? So, trying to empower kids through through our own history, really, kids of all ages, including adults, yeah, including adults, yeah. yeah. Oh wow, what other your what are some well what are some of the composers that you have found that most people you know of color that most people don't know about sure so we worked largely with classical music yeah. um and for within that realm certainly within chamber music so, yes. so maybe a handful of, of players william grant still comes to mind who was sort of Never a heard of him. a grandfather uh in the early 1900s grandfather of, of black art music, no, um, wonderful, beautiful symphonies. He had symphonies that were performed in Germany, standing ovation, repeat that movement, repeat that movement. He, he was very much a pioneer. Um, there's contemporary composers, Coleridge Taylor Perkinson, who we're actually going to be performing next week. Okay. Um, other Variva. Yeah, other, other composers, women composers, Valerie Coleman and um, Elena Alp. Eleanor Alberga, who lives actually in England. There's, there's a wealth of composers um, which are incredibly exciting in their voices, very, very unique that we're exploring. Now, those few that you just mentioned, I've never heard of any of them. Yeah. You know, it's like, like you said, there's a wealth 
of information out there that we here, our youth, our elders, don't know anything mm -hmm. about. And for you to be able to bring that, you know, for, for your, you know, your program to bring that mm -hmm. to the community and to the children and the, you know, and the elders, I think that is amazing. I think it's wonderful. It's, it's been incredibly gratifying I and it has been. gives more fuel to the fire to keep doing it. And certainly for myself, I, I come across so much information, so much history, so much culture, so much music that I, I never even knew existed. So and my background is, is music. music. This is what I should know. Uh, and again, there's, there's so much information, but a lot of it is, is buried. You really have to search for it. Yeah. So really what we're trying to do is make that as accessible and open and and uh, welcome as many people in as possible. Do you find the research, well, I'm sure you find the research uh, rewarding and, and, mm -hmm. and gratifying. Mm -hmm. as, you re as you all are researching and finding this information, are you putting it together as, 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 as far as a catalog type of, so that other, like you can say, well, this is where this particular Mm -hmm. you know, piece came from, this is mm -hmm. this particular artist, composer, so that others can learn and know and possibly want to do that type of research, if nothing else. Yeah, we, for our own purposes, we certainly have our own collection. Okay. We, we feature music as of now that involves strings, so violin, viola, and cello, yep. and piano, and also the voice, voice being so incredibly important for black culture. Musically, yes. um, so we have for our own purposes our own collection, and it's it's been great, sort of being a a thought leader, I guess, in this in this world where people would would approach me and say, "Do you know music for orchestra by black composers?" and "Do you know music for woodwind quintets by black composers?" and I might say, yes. "I don't, but I can I can uh, find I, I it can out find for it. you. I, I know where I can look um, and build a connection." Where, where I have those kind of resources and, and people come to me and I can help them in that kind of way. But publishing something or creating an online database, there are those things, and again, you kind of have to find them, them, but there are those things. When you've, when you've done your research, mm -hmm. is in researching this, how did you come across? I mean, how did you find that out there? I mean, was there a it? area that you went to yeah. You know, on mm -hmm. the web or in the library and said, well, this, you know, oh, found this yeah. name. Nobody ever do. Well, when I, when I moved back in 2013, j straight from Germany, I was completely unemployed. So oh. I was finding um, meetup groups to do flash mobs and just all sorts of random things. So I had a lot of time. So going to the library at that time, New England Conservatory Library and the, the Boston Public Library, literally just looking on the shelves. Uh, last year... We also, my partner and I, we went to the Center for Black Music Research in now Chicago. Is, I was going to say, where is that? It's in Chicago. It, it, I should say it was in Chicago. Um, so we, we caught it at just the right time last summer. Okay. And literally, it's, an, it's a, a space where you can do this kind of research in oh, all, really? all sorts of styles. So for us, classical music, but in jazz and rap and hip hop, in, in anything, in, in really? African music, in anything. So for us, that was fantastic to have gotten the funding to be able to go and spend an entire week literally just nerding out, <laughs> pilfering the stacks <laughs> and finding all this music that otherwise we wouldn't have come across. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And that was an exciting time. We, we very much would love to to go back to I'm, similar places. Were they places. Like in Chicago or are they still there? Did they move? I, I, I don't think it exists anymore, or it might have been absorbed. It's, it was housed at Columbia College. Um, really? So it, it, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. S yeah, really unfortunate. that is. I mean, that's a piece of, that's a, a long legacy. Yeah, the, really the only kind in the country. Oh, my God. So it's now we're, we're trying to carry the torch and make sure that as much information as we've collected, that we, you've can, collected. Yeah, we can get it out there. So what, what do you like most about the program? What do you like most about the project? Hmm. Well, for, for me, as artistic director, I, I wear many hats. I know to you what, do. what Justin was saying. So the marketing I do and the communications I do and um, programming I do, the grant writing and everything. So there's lots of... I need to talk to her <laughs> some more. Lots of, of 
categories that are, are necessary, and I wouldn't say I, I like to do them, but it takes up a lot of my energy. Really, the, the actual events, the actual programming, I mean, being on stage and, and having a dialogue musically and having a dialogue, obviously, with words with the audience, that is incredibly exciting. Mm, and yeah. going into a school or going into a, a community a center. center and doing the educational work, that's incredibly exciting. All the other things to get there are needed and take up time, but really, it's, it's the programming. I would love to do as much and more programming as possible. You said that you're partnering with the Roxbury YMCA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're having a concert, aren't we? we yes, we are. We are. We're having a concert uh -huh. next Thursday. So this edutainment. Ed edutainment, that it will be. We um, are incredibly excited this year, uh, which is in our third season. So we're still, we're still babies. We're still new. Um, we are the cultural ensemble in residence this year at the YMCA, which, wow. is, which is fantastic. It's, it's exciting for us. And we'll be able to, over the course of this year, offer recitals, the first one being next, next week, this edutainment concert, yes. um, educational workshops and pre-K story time, picture books, uh, reading sessions with kindergartners talking about black history uh, over the summer. So the first concert, the first event for our residency will be next Thursday. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I think that is so fantastic. Um, what's the programming going to be like for mm -hmm. that? Sure. So that, that recital will feature works uh, from black composers from across the diaspora. And uh, it will be all string quartets. So really? we'll, we'll do, I'll, I'll be there. I will be playing my viola. Yep. There will be music from um, Chevalier de Saint-Georges. Have you heard of Chevalier? This sounds yours? Sounds familiar, but I can't say for sure. <laughs> he, I think I've heard it, though. Good, yeah. Name. So he, he was a contemporary of Mozart way, way back in the day and lived in, in uh, England. Oh. And he um, was a violinist, a very profound violinist and also a composer. Wrote a number of string quartets, so we're going to be paying homage to him uh, with one of his works. Other works by Valerie Coleman, who has uh, a woodwind quintet that is all composed, comprised of African-American mm -hmm. uh, players, uh, musicians. And she's also a composer writing um, music for the wind quintet and also for string quartet. And um, more chamber music for string quartet. So it's all, all black composers, a lot of classical music. We'll be playing some, some rag times from Scott Joplin as well, oh, throwing that in yeah. there too. But uh, it'll, be, it'll be a mix. And the edutainment aspect comes with, from being able to have a dialogue and certainly family friendly talk about who, who this composer was, where, where is this composer coming from, oh, their okay. experience, why is this piece called a certain way, what were they going through at the time, at the when time they that were, they did that, that they piece? Writing this, can you relate to it, how, let's talk about it. So family friendly, free, open to the, to the community as well at 7.30. I love it. At, no, at um, 7, 7 o'clock, sorry. Seven yes, 7. 7 o'clock. I know, it's on the calendar. 7 o'clock. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. So for all of you out there, next Thursday at the 18th at 7 o'clock at the Roxbury Wife, the Roxbury Family Y, come down and have some edutainment. I think it's going to be fantastic due to the fact that I've already heard this group and I've heard these great, these great ladies and men, they are absolutely fantastic. It was when I first saw them, when I first saw you all and I heard, I said, huh? Wow. And then when I found out who you were and what you, because uh -huh. you and I talked just for a minute. Right. And I said, oh my gosh, I was excited. I said, a new part of culture that I'd never heard of before. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Scott Joplin, I've heard of him through uh, Missing Links. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know them, mm -hmm. but I met, I heard about him. I always knew who the name, but never knew that he was an African American. Ah, I yeah. Knew, I yeah. always thought that Scott Joplin was white. I will not lie. I had mm -hmm. no idea that the man was black. Mm -hmm. All these many years. And so think of, of what he did musically, right? Musically. At, at the like, time when he lived. So. Yes. It's like fantastic. It's an it's like, whoa. So, you know, I was surprised. And uh -huh. then t 
to meet you and learn about your pro, you know, learn about your program and what you're doing and the educational part of it. I think it's fabulous, amazing. Like just, I could just sit here and listen all day. Just, I mean, you guys just, I, because I was intrigued by, by the music when I first heard you guys in yeah. December. And, and the I music want, really? that, that we were doing was yeah. arranged by Anthony Green, who's, who's way off in the Netherlands. And he's in the Netherlands. He's in the Netherlands now. Is he, when is he coming back? So, no. yes. <laughs> yeah, we actually, um, February 18th and then also March 18th, we have another event where Anthony will be coming back and playing piano. And March 18th will be world premiere art songs with, with our beautiful singers that we have on board with Castle of Our Skins. Oh. And those um, world premiere art songs will set the text of black poets. Fantastic. And hopefully we'll have some yeah. of those poets um, coming, coming to the event and you can meet and, and share with them your thoughts about their poetry and oh, be able to interact with the composers who, who wrote the music as well. So he'll be here for that event in March. All righty. Mm -hmm. Good. Are, we going to, are you going to be doing any poetry next Thursday or is this just going to be all orchestra music? I think next Thursday, probably no poetry. No poetry. Okay. Maybe maybe I'll read the Nikki Giovanni. That's a good idea. Yeah. Where, where our name comes from. Maybe I'll do that. That would be beautiful. I'll, I'll do that. Do that. I could wait for that. Good. Yeah. But most likely it will just be music and everything fundamentally what we're trying to do is spark curiosity yes. in black culture. And that really has to start through um, being being inquisitive and having having wanting to know you know cookie crumbs yeah wanting to know to, yeah. to invite people in you've so given, talking about that you, context and you've given this little piece now you know what do we want to know who are we you know where did this come from mm -hmm. you know who mm -hmm. is this who is this composer like you said what was he thinking right um and the fact that it's family oriented i think gives not only the adults the children because Absolutely. little children can ask the most interesting questions mm -hmm. you know they can ask the most interesting questions and you'd be surprised and you because you wouldn't think looking at them that they would be that inquisitive because they don't have it all the time mm -hmm. you know and to and to hear that music and for them to be there I just I to me I just I want to be I'm going to be there but you know to see the look on their faces, you know, while they're mm -hmm. listening. Because I just think it's a fabulous thing. I think it's a wonderful way for them to learn about, th about their culture, to realize that there's more, Absolutely. you know, that there's more to our legacy, there's more to our culture. Absolutely. Beautiful accomplishments that we're trying to, we're trying to unearth uh, I in the way that we, that we can. Yeah. yeah. Does, your, so did, does your research continue? as you go along? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And for us, um, with what we do, having only maybe about five or six people performing together, so, so, so very, very small. Yes. Uh, when people ask me, I need a huge orchestra, and I need, I need music for this huge orchestra, can you suggest something? For me to have um, my own resources and my own curiosity yes, to say, OK, yeah, let me, let me take up that challenge and find out more information for you. So it's, every day is always a learning experience. I bet it is. I bet it is. I love Castle of Our Skins. I think it's wonderful. I love the name. When I heard where it came from, and when I read that, and I said, mm -hmm. wow, Nikki Giovanni. And I love her stuff. Always have. Mm -hmm. And to see it, you know, to see where you're going with it. You know, and for that name, because I, it was funny when I started reading your information online, I said to myself, before I even really looked, I was wondering, where did they get that name? Mm. How did that name come about? And it was like, okay. And then when I read this, I said, whoa, I'm excited. I'm intrigued. Oh, I want to know more. You know, that's great. Oh, yeah. And the castle, I mean... Castle. Yeah, why the castle? Well, for, from, the, from the poem, Castle of Our Skins, yeah. 
thinking that this this is this is royal this is regal yeah right who you are your culture is is something to be incredibly you proud of your kings and queens thank you living in a castle right yes and um filling that and surrounding yourself with beautiful things so no no positive no 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 no, ne <laughs> no, no negative no negative no negative just positive thought. and beautiful positive encouragement uplifting there's certainly a lot of negativity that could fill your castle but but as a community come together with strength and with pride and with and with forward motion and with hope conviction and, and conviction hope. just all of these these really just uplifting beautiful things is fundamentally in the words of Nikki Giovanni F, of course and, and beautifully spoken with by Nikki Giovanni but fundamentally what we're interested in doing as well oh god it is so beautiful yes it's exciting I can't wait till next month so I can meet Mr. Green, who keeps eluding me. Uh huh. But Ash, I thank you. Thank you. I thank you so much for coming on the show. I can't wait for the concert. I'm excited, you know, and I want you all to keep doing what you're doing. And I will keep following as I'm going to follow. Hey, when I get new venues and I find out new information about, you know, new artists because mm -hmm. as far as i'm concerned you are an artist mm -hmm. you know you're beautiful artists and you're artistically teaching and i think that is so wonderful i really do so i want to say again thank you for being an artist of color and i hope that my audience today got a lot of information come out to both the events the one, um, the edutainment at the, the recital at the Roxbury Y next Thursday, the 18th at seven o'clock. And on the 19th for the prelude, which is going to be at the Bruce Bowling Center. Thank you. I'm glad everybody was out and visiting to us today and have a wonderful evening.